Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. So we've been speaking something the last few days about the Sankirtan Jagya and how this is a Jagya. I, we gave a very elaborate explanation of this song the other night and our time is a little short now. So I think I won't go in that direction now. We have a song sheet. We can look at it. And we see how uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is describing to the devotees in Chaitanya Mangal how all the different elements are there for fire jagya. We'll say a few things. Uh, Sabaloka Karna Gharta. All the different living the uh, living entities, sablo, karnagartha, their ears, kunda parishar, they're the sacrificial pit. You need to have a sacrificial pit if you're going to do a fire jagya. Uh -huh. And you also need to have a spoon, uh -huh. a shrava, that you use to pour ghee into the fire. And you need ghee. So jiva shrava, the tongue of all the living entities, that's the spoon. And uh, Dvani Rasa Drita Manohar, the sound of Krishna's very beautiful name, Manohar. It's Manohar now. That's the Grita, that's the ghee that you uh, pour into the ear. Our ears are the sacrificial ladles, or the sacrificial pig. And then something happens. Antare Pravishtahana Bhava Agni Jvalu. When that ghee goes through the ear, it goes down into the heart. If you pour that ghee on your head, it won't go into your heart. If you pour it on your feet, if you pour it on your shirt or your pants, it won't go. If you pour it on your computer even, it won't go into your heart. But if we pour it into our ear, then it goes into our heart. And there in our heart, Agni Siksha Pulakashru Kampakalevari, there's a fire, the fire of bhakti which is in the hearts of all living entities, naturally. And when the ghee of this pleasing name comes through our ear, in Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in one song, he describes that this name comes like a volcano, like a volcano explodes. It comes out of the heart of a premi bhakta. And it comes from his mouth. And then we hear it. And Guru tells us, now you chant. And then we chant what we've heard from him, and then that same name that we've heard comes out of our mouth and it goes in our ear if you don't pour it on your feet. <laughs> it goes in your ear and then it comes into your heart. And the fire of bhakti in your heart starts to burn. And then something happens. Pulukashu hmm? kampakalevade. Your body starts shaking. Hmm? If you light a fire inside of your body, you go to the hospital and they cut your stomach open and they put some twigs in there and they light a fire, your body will start shaking. Uh -huh. But this kind of fire won't hurt you. This kind of fire is very, very good. Uh -huh. And your bodily hairs stand on end and you have all the different symptoms of ecstatic ecstasy. So this is a Sankirtan Jagya of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is the only thing that's required in Kali Yuga. Fakir uh -huh. Mahaprabhu, he was singing a nice song the other day. <clears throat> Kali kuku kadam jari chao he. Kali kuku kadam jari chao he. The dog of Kali, he's driven away by the chanting of the holy names. If you go to try to drive this dog away with a stick, it won't work. If you try to do drive this dog away with some psychology courses or some social seminars, or even management seminars. Or if you try to drive this dog of Kali away by building a temple, he won't go away. He'll move into the temple. <laughs> you may try to drive this dog away with deity worship. Even then, he won't go away. You may try to drive him away with prasadam distribution. He won't go away. Only by the chanting of the holy names. When Krishna Kung and I were married, Fakir Mumbu gave us one instruction, very nice instruction. He said, every day you should do kirtan together. Because otherwise you may do some quarrel. Hmm? So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's Sankirtanaika Pitaro. We're missing Sankirtanaika Prabhu. 
Sankirtanaika Pitaro, Kamalaya Taksha, the Lotus Side Father of the Sankirtan movement. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's spoken about the nature of Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan Jagya. It wasn't performed just with Brahmins, and it wasn't performed inside of temples uh, where no one's allowed. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took it on the street. And the Janjas, the Wampers, <coughs> they were playing in time. And in that kirtan, Premi Dala Dala, Sonara Anga, there was a golden mountain. And this is a very unusual mountain because mountains usually stay in one place. But this mountain was shaking and trembling. Premi Dala Dala, Sonara Anga, Charani Nupura Bhaje. And on his lotus feet, the Nupuras said, ankle bells were playing. Uh, why Bhaktivinoda especially mentions this? He's Sonara Anga because his body is wrapped up by Srimati Radharani. Srimati Radharani is covering the body of Shamsunda Krishna. Shamsunda has become Gorasunda. Sonara Anga. And just as Srimati Radharani, she has new pores, ankle bells, Charani Nupura Bhaje. Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet also have new pores on it. And what does he sing? <laughs> He was staying in the uh, uh, 
Yoga Pit in Mayapur. And one, they had different devotees acting as choky guards, guards. Because sometimes the Muslims were coming and causing troubles. So one morning, it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, the dead of the night. Suddenly he saw Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati, his Gormash, come out of his room. And he was ecstatic and he was running, oh, oh, and running. And the devotee was happening, Gormash was running after him. And then Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta fell on the ground. His disciple came and picked him up and his Gormash was crying. He said, did you see? Did you see them? I didn't see anything. <laughs> you didn't see the Panchatattva? They're here doing kirtan? Mukunda Madhava Yadava Hari Bodhi Bodhi Hadana Bodhi They have some the streets and singing Mukunda Madhava Yadava Hari Niche Didal Bashi Gelo Redati Why are you wasting your life just eating and sleeping? Getting a university degree hmm? so you can pass school in a nicer uh, toilet in your home. They have a bigger car. Huh? What's the value of your life? It has no meaning. They're very, very sad. If you don't do that, then everything will be lost. No skip a line. <laughs> So many problems. Even if you start chanting Hare Krishna, you'll also have problems. So Namashraya Kori Jatani Tumi Takaha Apanakaji. Just take shelter of the Holy Name. And he says, Takaha Apanakaji. You can stay wherever you're at. Stani Sita, Shuti Gatam, Tanuvan Manobir. You don't have to become a sannyasi or a brahmachari. You don't have to give up your job. But chant, chant. Chant, take shelter of this holy name. This is the Sankirtan Yogya of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> Yeah. 
Shakti Ashi Madhulana. Said, I came here with such a nice gift for you. Huh? I came here, Miso. I came to your house with a big box of sweets, but you wouldn't let me inside. You wouldn't open the door. Mahaprabhu is standing there. Such a nice big box. We say, I'm very sorry, I have no time. I have something else to do. I have to go to work. But you can chant anytime. Avidyatim in a tap on a lupe. This holy name, it drives away all the darkness. Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodido Gododai Pushpavanto Chitra Sando Tamo Mido Shri Shri Gaur Nityananda who have risen like the sun and moon on the horizon of Godadesh. Very amazing thing. We've never seen the sun and the moon rise at the same time. And all the wonderful qualities of both the sun and the moon are there. The sun is very warming and friendly and it gives life. It drives away the darkness. And at the same time, the moon is very cooling and is full of nectar. So these two brothers, Gaur and Nityananda, they've risen like the sun and the moon. And you can't really say which one of them is like the sun or which one of them is like the moon. But they're better than the ordinary sun or moon. The ordinary sun may purify something. You put some stool or urine out in the ground and the sun beats down upon it, it'll purify those things. But if you put those nasty things you keep them in your bathroom or somewhere you're locked up in your house. The sun rays can't reach them, and those nasty things will never be purified. But the sun rays of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are superior because they reach into your heart. And the sun will begin shining inside your heart. And therefore, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he says, I want one thing from all of you. to know how to please your Guru Maharaj, how to please the sadhus. Bhaktivinoda is giving us this secret. Krishna Nam Sudha Koryopa. Jurao Bhakati Vinoda Pra. Nama Bina Kichu. Nahiko Ar. Chodabu Venamaji. There's nothing else except for the holy name in all the three worlds. You're not going to please your Guru Dev. Guru Maharaj, I brought so much money for you. Hmm? Have you been chanting? Oh, Guru Dev, I haven't had time. But here's lots of money. <laughs> What's the value? Srila Prabhupada didn't come to the West to open a business to make money. He was doing business already in India, making medicines and things. He didn't come to the West at such an advanced age to make money. But he came to spread the chanting of the holy names. So this is Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan Jabya. And these are the different items in it. And each one of these items, the Madanga, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is saying, Tatai Tatai Bajalako, Gana Gana Jai Janjiro. The Madanga drum is making this wonderful sound, Tatai Tatai. There are many different types of drums in India. There are many different types of drums in the world today. Many devotees like to play this Jimbe <laughs> drum. Mm -hmm. But those drums are not mentioned by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. They're not mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita. And we, we, don't, we don't hate those drums. 
but there's something very special about the Mirdanga. Mm -hmm. Mirdanga Brahma Rupaya Lavanyam Rasa Madhuri Sahasra Guna Samyukta Mirdanga Mirdangaya Namo Namaha. You can repeat. Mirdangaya Mirdangaya Namo Namaha. Namo Namaha. Mirdangaya Namo Namaha. Mirdangaya Namo Namaha. They offer our basis to the Mirdanga drum. Mirdanga Brahma Rupaya, he's a very embodiment of spiritual bliss. And the Mirdanga is considered to be an incarnation of Lord Nityananda. And some poets have said that Krishna's Vangsi, his flute, came in Kali Yuga as the Mirdanga. This Mirdanga, Lavanyam Rasa Madhuri, is full of very sweet mellows, very full of rasa. They don't say that about the Jinbe drum. The Jambi drum is very, very loud. If you play that drum, you have to stop the Mirdanga. You can't hear it. There's other drums, they'll make, too, make so much noise. Some people like them for Harinam or something. I'm not. There's no rasa in them. They have another tradition. They come from another kind of place. There's another mood in them. Sahasra Guna Samyuktam. The Mirdanga has thousands and thousands of wonderful qualities. And you know the Mirdanga speaks. Did you know the Mirdanga speaks? Did you know? Have you ever heard the Madanga speak? It's never talked to you? No. Would you like to know what the Madanga says? Yes? Here's what the Madanga says. Ye sam shri madhya soda sutta pada kamale nasti bhakta naranam Ye sam madira kanya priya guna katane nanurakta rasagya Yesham Shri Krishna Lila Lalita Gunakata Sadaro Naiva Karni. Here's what he says. Dittan, Dittan, Digitan Katayati Nitaram Kirtanasta Mridangaha. Mridanga says, Dittan, Dittan, Digitan. Dittan, Dittan, Digitan. What does it mean, Dittan, Dittan, Digitan? He's speaking. Mirdanga is saying something, saying something to you. Huh? What is he saying? He's giving a message. Hey, Suno Suno, everybody listen. To all those people out there who have no devotion for the lotus feet of the son of Mother Yashoda. Who's the son of Mother Yashoda? Krishna. To those persons whose tongues have no attachment for speaking about the kata of Krishna and the gopis. To those persons whose ears... They don't have any uh, desire to hear the Krishna Kata, the stories of Krishna's pastimes. Then the Mridanga says to them, Diktam, Diktam, Digitam. Mm -hmm. He says, mm -hmm. To hell with them, to hell with them, to hell with them. Very strong, don't say that word. <laughs> diktam, Diktam, Digitam. The Mridanga speaks very, very strongly. This is a message of the Mridanga dream. This is from. We printed this in our uh, Krishna Katamita Bindu magazine some years ago. These are some ancient Sanskrit shlokas found in a book called Bhava Sindhu Tarani. So similarly, the Kartals. Have you heard the Kartals speak? Kartals also speak? You never heard them speak? Do you ever speak to the Kartals? Maybe that's why they don't speak to you. <laughs> if you speak to them, maybe they'll speak to you. The Kartals, they also have a message. What do they do? They go, and you make a sound like this. Mrityam jayayam samanam jayayam tat kingaram shabhisukam jayayam shudveti dure karatala shabdam sankirta kamti kalunopayanti. The cartels have a message too. I'll be victorious over death. It's the first beat. That's the meaning of the first sound. It goes like that. I'll be victorious over death. Next beat. I'll be victorious over Yamaraj. And third beat. I'll be very happy and victorious over Yamaraj's servants. And when the these three personalities, death personified, Yamaraj and the Yamadudas, when they hear this sound from a distance, they don't go anywhere near the kirtan. Sometimes in the kirtan, the devotees, they play a horn. Advani, you may have seen in some pictures. 
So that uh, horn is also described. Nama Sankirtanad Bhutta Bhakti Dva Mata Mano Malaha Parshyeta Futkarai Vishana Nalavartmana. When Bhakti begins to rise during Nam Sankirtan, it acts like a fire. And it burns to ashes all the impurities in the mind. And therefore, the sun, the sound of the horn blasts away that filthy residue of whatever desires we have in our mind uh -huh, by the sound coming forth from us too. And sometimes in the kirtan, you clap your hands sometimes? Yes? So that also has a meaning. Dehaga krita gehani papa pakshi kolanya ho aparshayaitam sasvat karla tali pradiyate. Residing in the tree of the body, our body's like a tree, and there's many sins. But when you clap your hands during the kirtan, all those sins go away. So this is the kirtan, this is the kirtan yagya of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and these are the <coughs> elements of it. And sometimes our Vaishnav Acharyas, they appreciated a harmonium, something. I ended up he liked the harmonium, and he, but he didn't appreciate this uh, accordion. accordion. To him, it said he sounded like a Russian bar mitzvah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, he wasn't very fond of those djembe drums. It doesn't mean that we can't play them. Srila Prabhupada, when he was doing kirtans in Tamil Square Park, people were bringing all kinds of varad instruments. And also, in, in Hippie Hill, they had a park they called Hippie Hill in Golden Gate Star State Park, Golden Gate Park in uh, San Francisco. So many people bring so many different instruments. Some very good. But those instruments don't have rasa. They don't have the same meaning. They're not directly part of Mahaprabhu's kirtan movement. And we want to use these instruments. Why? Because our Guru Maharaj, he appreciates these things. experiencing ecstatic symptoms. So this kirtan, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Krishna nam sudha kodaya pan jadav bhaktivinoda pran that this is how you satisfy me. This is our main service. Srila Prabhupada, he describes in one purport in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He says that of all the regulative principles, the spiritual master's order to chant at least 16 rounds is most essential. This is the main thing that we have. Haridas Thakur is known as the Nam Acharya. And you know once, because he was chanting Hare Krishna too much, the Muslims became very angry with him. And they captured him and they brought him before the Chankazi. And the Chankazi said, Haridas, what are you doing? You were born in a very good Muslim family, and now you're spoiling everything by hanging out with those Hare Krishna people. Hmm? You should stop this. 
if you stop this chanting Hare Krishna right now, then we'll forgive you. But if you don't stop chanting Hare Krishna, then we're going to cut your body to pieces. Do you know what Haridas Thakur told them? Would you like to hear? Kanda Kanda Hai Deha Jai Jai He said, but you can cut my body into a thousand pieces, but every little piece of my body will keep chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> because I'll never stop chanting Hare Krishna. Because this is my service from my Gurudev. This is what my Gurudev gave me. Mm -hmm. It's described in um, the Vamana Kalpa in Bhakti Sandarva. Yo mantra sa guru sakshat, yo guru sahari swayam. Guru Yasya Bhavet Tushtas, Tushya Tushto Hari Swayam. You should understand that this mantra that we're chanting, this is also our Guru Dev. Yo Mantra Saguru Sakshat. Our Guru Dev is there. And Rupa Goswami in his um, Pajavali, he says, Ata Guru Shri Padadvanda Bhaktin. This holy name gives bhakti to our Guru Dev. We want to know how to have Guru Bhakti by chanting Krishna's name. This is how. So, your mantra, Saguru Sakshat, this mantra that we've gotten from our Gurudev is not different from my Gurudev. And your Guru, Sa Hari Swayam, my Gurudev is not different from Krishna. Guru Yashya Bhavet Tushtas, Tasha Tushto Hari Swayam. When you please your Gurudev, then Krishna becomes pleased. Yashya Prasadit, Bhagavad Prasadit, Yashya Prasadit, Nagati Kutopi. And your Guru Dev is always present in that holy name. The poet Sanatan Das, he sings in his song. Mahimaya Guru Krishna Eka Bhavarijan Guru Adya Bhiti Sabha Satcha Bhavarijan understand that in Mahima, in glory, your Guru Dev and Krishna are non-different. Guru Agya Hride Sabat Satcha Korimani. When you accept your Guru Dev's orders in your heart, that's when you really respect your Guru Dev. Not just that you go to your Guru Maharaj, please give him initiation, and then he makes sure Nanda Jit's there with a camera, <laughs> high resolution picture. And then he takes a picture and he make a big wall-sized photo of me getting japa beads from Gurudev. So I can show everyone I'm there with Gurudev. That's some kind of mentality like the people who go to Disneyland. <laughs> they go to Disneyland and Disneyland they have a life-size photo, cut-up photo, of Michael Jackson. And you stand next to the picture and they take your photo and say, I was with Michael Jackson. <laughs> like that. So what kind of mentality is this? That's not really Sadhu Sangha. Sadhu Sangha means when we accept the orders of our Gurudev in our heart, huh? understanding such a Kodimani, that whatever my Gurudev speaks, this is coming from Krishna. Such a Gyane Guru Vake Someone who has vishvas, very strong faith, such a gani guru vaki in the words of your guru dev. My guru Maharaj, I saw many people would go to him. Guru Maharaj, give me some instruction. And guru Maharaj, uh, maybe some other time, you go away. Now he wouldn't give them. Why? Because he knew, if you give them some instruction and they don't follow that thing. Then it's very, very bad. That's Guru Bhagya. That's the third offense to the holy name. You may ask a question, what is the difference between Satam Ninda Nana Paramamaparadam Vitanute or Sadhu Ninda and Guru Bhagya? 
Why is it that it said Satam Ninda Namna Paramam Aparada? The Sadhu Ninda is the topmost offense. More than Gura Vagya? Is that right, Prabhuji? That's according to my opinion. It is. Sadhu Ninda is more than Gura Vagya. Yes. But Gura Vagya is Sadhu Ninda and something more. Because Guru Dev is also a sadhu. Depends what is your intention, of course. Yes, this is explanation for Kirma Wagi. Nice, nice point. Huh? Guru Dev, he's a sadhu. So if we do some ninda, but why does it say Guru Avagya? Avagya means to neglect or, or disobey the instruction. You may quarrel with your father. Sometimes I quarrel with my father. <laughs> but if you disobey your father, if you refuse to follow his instructions, then your relationship will be cut. So, because the essential point, what is it? Acharjera matajay say matasar. The essence of our spiritual life is instruction from our Guru Dev. Some years ago, some devotees in Bhubaneswar, they, they said, Madam Nanak, did you hear? It's Maha Kumbha Mela. Mm. And we should go to Prayag, we'll take bath there in the Triveni. And very, very good. So you should come. I said, why will I go there? And I asked him, what will happen if I go there? He said, oh, omelet. Nectar is coming down from the heavenly planets, landing there in the water. I said, oh, very good. So if I take bath there, in that Ganga, Shastra says, I'll get some Sukriti. I may even get Bhakti Unmukhi Sukriti. Sukriti, which will lead to Bhakti. Well, what's the best result of that? The best result of that bhakti and mukhi sakriti set some, set some uh, what is it? Krishna bhakti janma mula holya sadhu sangha. The, you may get association with the sadhu. So I already have association with my guru, Dave. And if you have association with the guru, then you may get an instruction. And I told the devotee, I already have an instruction. So if I leave my instruction and I go with you to take bath with you here, it's a fall down. So I can't do that, so I have to stay here. My Guru Dave gave me this instruction. So we should understand that Guru is always present. Yo Mantra, Saguru Saksha, Yo Guru Sahari Swayam. Our Guru Dave is always present with us in the form of the Holy Name, if we have strong faith in that. In the 10th um, canto of the Bhagavatam, chapter 40, it said, Bahu Murtyeka Murtika. Krishna's Advaya Tattva. He's one. But that same Krishna becomes many in the Raslila. Bahu Murtika Murtika. In his Saartha Darshan commentary, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, he says, Chinmai Namnanati Pyaikyam Abhipraitam. That just as Krishna's Advaya Tattva, but Bahu Murtika Murtika, he's one, but he becomes many. In the Raslila, Krishna became one with so many gopis. Have you ever seen that? You did. Very good. You should take me someday. <laughs> We'd also like to see. Krishna's one, but he became many, and he danced with all the gopis. So similarly, Krishna's name is one. And Guru Dev may speak one Krishna name, just like Gopakumar's Guru heard mantra one time from his Guru Dev. But Chinmai Namnanati Pyaikyam Abhipraitam, from that one name, from that one Krishna comes many Krishnas in the Ras Lila. From that one name comes many names. And they're all Krishna. They're all, we're associating with our Guru Dev. And therefore our Guru Maharaj used to say that uh, Kirtan is another name of Shravan. Chanting is another name for hearing. Because we've heard from our Guru Dev. So then after you've heard, then your Guru Dev tells you, now you go out and you chant. You may say, what's the value of that? I said that to my Guru Maharaj once. I said, Guru Maharaj, I'm afraid to go to Malaysia. Why are you afraid? He said, be brave, you go. I said, Guru Maharaj, when I go there, they ask me to give class lots. And so, you go and speak. I said, Guru Maharaj, what's the value? I'm a conditioned soul. There's two types of speakers, a Sarag Vakta and a Nirag Vakta. Jiva Goswami says in Bhakti Sandarva, a speaker with material desires and a speaker without material desires. Jiva Goswami says, we want to hear from a speaker without material desires. So if you put a, a little sign next to the Vyasa sign in the temple, only speakers with no material desires. How many devotees will speak? Raise your hand. Who's going to sit on that Vyasa sign? So then everything's over. 
There's no more cure. <laughs> but Gurudev says, no, you go and speak. But you're speaking, you're not actually speaking, you're hearing. My grandma told me, he said, no, you must. He said, someone asked you, you must. Go. And then he jammed his finger in my chest very hard. He said, but when you speak, just repeat what you've heard from your guru and the previous acharyas, and don't think it belongs to you. No. That's deity worship. Hmm? When uh, Misha Prabhu is doing Arti for Gorni time, hmm? and some people are coming and watching, and you're thinking, just see, they came to see me today. Very good. Do you think like that, Prabhu? No, I hope not. <laughs> they came to see Gorni Thai. If, if you think they came to see you, that's very bad. They came to see Gorni Thai. So, Nimrat Saranam Satam Vedyam. In this kirtan, we have to be free from envy. And in this kirtan, we have a, a, a speaker, and we have listeners, we have people who repeat. So both persons must be free from envy. It's a Vaishnava Sangha, and it's not that the speaker is better than the listeners. The listeners, are, we're here to do a service, or Grandma used to say that we listen for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna. Because they get pleasure by his hearing. That's our purpose in hearing, not for our pleasure, not for our fun. Oh, it's a nice entertainer. I like that. He sings nice songs and tells some stories. Very good. I'll have a good time tonight. It's not for our pleasure. We want to please Guru and Krishna. I've heard from older sadhus that in Braj, even 50 years ago, things are very different. Many of the sadhus, they would come together and they would have special kata, but only sadhus were allowed. No dilly wobbles. No people from Delhi. No people from the hub. Hey. Only sadhus were there. And those sadhus, they would all sit and listen very intensely. And if someone would start looking around, scratching, doing this or that, looking at the book or something, that they would gather together, they would pick him up and throw him out. <laughs> because it was considered everyone should be so attentive in hearing. And so that's the service of the listeners. And in a Vaishnava Sangha, they're not envious. They're not thinking, oh, I can do better than that person. I'd rather hear from this Maharaj. Why will we hear from this person? They're coming for Krishna Kata. We're not coming to the Arctic to watch Miso. We're coming to the Arctic to see Gorni Thai. We come to Krishna Kata to hear about Krishna, not for personality cults. We come to hear about Krishna. And the speaker has to be free from envy. If he starts thinking, they're all coming to hear from me, very, very good, I'll be famous now, that's envy. That's envy of Krishna. And he's disobeying the order of his Gurudev. We're, we're doing offense to our tradition because it doesn't belong to us. The Krishna Kata doesn't belong to us. Krishna's name doesn't belong. We're just servants. And our job, we're supposed to speak this thing. We're supposed to repeat what we've heard from our Guru. He said one name. And we repeat that. It becomes many names. And our kirtan is another name for Shraddha. By our chanting, we're hearing from our Guru Dev. That's our service. And we have to do that in a mood free from envy. This is the essential point of our society. My grandmother used to say that every day, you should hear Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, if you don't do any other service, you hear Srimad Bhagavatam every day. It's so important. But to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, we have to be free from envy. Indian culture, they know this. In so many houses, every day, they recite Srimad Bhagavatam. Now maybe you see some great grandfather, some person there doing that. We should also recite Srimad Bhagavatam. Even some Western person today, if he becomes a Muslim, what do they do? They teach him to read Arabic. And then he starts reciting the Quran every day. That's what they have. So we should learn some Sanskrit. And we should recite every day Srimad Bhagavatam. Such a nice thing. The Skanda Purana speaks about the glories of reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam Shastram, Yatcha Bhagavatariyada, Kirtate Shriyate Chapi, Sri Krishna's Tatranishchitam. And reading the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is kirtan. This is part of Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan Jagya. This Srimad Bhagavatam is the instruction manual of Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan Jagya. 
And the Skanda Purana says in the Bhagavad Mahatma section that when you recite the Bhagavatam, you're not alone. Should I tell a story? Would you like to hear the story? Hmm? Okay. <laughs> Once there was one man, gosh, what is his name? I can't remember his name. He's from West Bengal. He's a very, maybe his name will come to my mind. He published a very famous edition of the Srimad Bhagavatam in, San, in Bengali characters, the Sanskrit commentaries. We have in our library for the book. So when he became a little older, he went to Vrindavan. And he was chanting Hare Krishna and wandering around in the forest. And one day, while he was wandering around in the forest, he saw some old sadhu who was sitting and reciting Srimad Bhagavatam in the middle of the forest by himself. And he was speaking to a tree. Do you ever talk to trees? You don't talk to Mardangas, you don't talk to Kartos, and you don't talk to trees. You should try. He was speaking to the tree, but he was speaking Srimad Bhagavatam to the tree. It was a tamal tree. Tamal tree is a black tree. Krishna. The leaves of the tamal tree are very soft. There are two tamal trees just outside the Tota Gopinath temple. You remember? And the leaves of that tree, they say they feel like Krishna's skin. You know, he's got a little in spirit. So he was reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam. No one was there, and he was crying. And this devotee from West Bengal, like that. Very interesting. So he sat down to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam class. And that sadhu recited all day long. And then the person from West Bengal got up and went away. He came again the next day. And every day he started coming and secretly sitting behind that sadhu and listening. The sadhu didn't know he was there. And one day he stepped on a little branch and he made some sound. And the sadhu turned and he saw him, oh, come, come, sit down here next to me. You will be the second listener. <laughs> the first listener is Krishna. You'll be the second listener. And this person from West Bengal, that, okay, it's a little, <laughs> little touched person. Anyway, nice human Bible talk. So he was going on speaking and speaking. And finally, he finished the 10th canto and the 11th canto and the 12th canto of the Bhagavatam. The Bhagavatam was finished. And when he finished reading the Bhagavatam, suddenly an amazing thing happened. That tamal tree, which was standing in front of them, this is a true story, that tree broke open. And inside that tree, that person from West Bengal, he saw a very beautiful boy. He had a flute in his hands, and he was smiling at him. And that boy from West Bengal, he fainted. Oh. <laughs> it's a very good machine of Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> so when he finally regained external consciousness later on, he found that he was laying with his head in the lap of that sadhu, and the sadhu was rubbing his head. Mm. And that sadhu told him, now you've seen my Shamsundar. He <laughs> said, now you should go and you recite Srimad Bhagavatam every day. And you won't be alone. And so that young man from Western Valley said, well, should I also sit in front of a tree? Not necessary. You can recite anywhere you like. Because hmm, Srimad Bhagavatam Shastra, Yatra Bhagavatam Yada, today, Whenever and wherever devotees of Krishna listen to the Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna is present. Krishna will come running. Even in your house, in your room, you start reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, you can't see him, but Krishna will come. Srila Prabhupada, some years ago, when he went to the uh, temple in Soho Street in England, um, one devotee, Smarahari Prabhu, <coughs> He made a Vyasa song for Srila Prabhupada. They were very hard, nice big Vyasa song, brand new. Probably came and sat down, chanted Jai Radha Madhav, and gave class. And then he went to his room. And then one devotee came down and said, Hey, Smarahari Prabhupada is calling for you. Smarahari went upstairs. And Prabhupada said, Very good Vyasa song. I want you to make two more. He said, Small ones, but this big. Smarahari said, Yes, Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, one for Lord Brahma and one for Narad Muni because they're coming every day to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. But you can't see them. So if you recite Srimad Bhagavatam in your room, Krishna will come running. And Krishna's not alone. Srimad Bhagavatam yata shlokam shlokartam evacha tatapi bhagavan krishna balavi bhivirajate Wherever one verse, just one verse, you just recite one verse every day of Srimad Bhagavatam. 
You know one verse of Srimad Bhagavatam? You should learn one verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. You teach her one verse. Yes? You learn one verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. If you speak that one verse, even it says shlokam shlok ardam, even shlok ardam, even half a verse, if you recite that, Krishna will come running with the gopis. Would you like to meet the gopis? Would that be good? Yes? So you recite one verse every day of Srimad Bhagavatam, and Krishna will come, and everything will be very, very nice. So, this kirtan is our kirtan for the pleasure of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and for our Guru Dev, because he's a representative of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. My grandma, as you used to say, there's two kinds of kirtan. There's Krishna kirtan and there's Maya kirtan. And sometimes we see some brahmachari in the temple and he's singing, Hare hey, Krishna, he's looking back. Does she see me? Huh? He's looking back to see if the girls are watching him. He's not thinking about Krishna. He's not doing Krishna kirtan. He's doing Maya kirtan. So our kirtan should be for the pleasure of Guru and Krishna, not for our pleasure. And we should take this uh, holy name with our tongue. Sabaloka karna gharta kunda parisa jiva shava dhani rasa pipta manohar with your tongue, that's the ladle, that's the spoon, and the ghee is Krishna's name, and we pour that into our ear, and the cone of our ear, and it goes down to our heart. So that's a very important thing. And this yajna, a yajna means a sacrifice. It means that we're giving up something. So in this yajna, we're giving up our inattentiveness. We're giving up thinking about other things. And in the... Uh, Harinam Chintamani, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, when he speaks about uh, pramada nama parad, pramada means inattentiveness. He says, Iha hoite gati prabhu shakala anarta. This, from this inattention comes all anartas. If we're inattentive when we're chanting, we're not pouring the ghee in our ear, we're pouring it on our feet or on our head or on our dhoti or some other place. We're not pouring it in our ear. We should pour the ghee of the holy name in our ear. That's the proper sacrifice. If we don't do that, if we're not focused on the chanting, it should be a very, a very intense thing. We were speaking about the sadhus and how they'll hear Srimad Bhagavatam without moving for six or eight hours. And they weren't looking this side and that side. They were just focused straight ahead. It's a yoga. <coughs> and when everyone has that kind of mood, it's a very powerful thing. So similarly, when we're chanting Krishna's name in this Nam Yagya of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we have to pour the ghee in our ear. If we don't pour the ghee in our ear, that ghee is very powerful. That ghee, this ghee will help things grow. If you pour ordinary ghee on the grass, the grass will die. But this ghee of Krishna's name is Nama Chintamani. And it'll make everything grow very nice, including our Anartas. So we have to be very, very careful. We'll get whatever we want, in other words. If we're chanting and we're thinking about hmm, getting a red bicycle. Would you like a red bicycle? No? Is you a devotee? But if we're chanting and we're thinking, I want a shiny red bicycle. Then Krishna's in the heart, and he wants to know. He's chanting my name. What does he want? Oh, he wants a shiny red bicycle. Well, I'll give him that. And so he'll give you a very nice, shiny red bicycle. But he'll do it in such a way that we'll never ask for that again, if we keep chanting. But some people, they stop chanting after they get their shiny red bicycle. So <laughs> we should be careful. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Haridas Thakur, he tells Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there's three types of inattentiveness. Odasinya jadya I'm chanting, but yeah, it's okay. I, I'm supposed to chant. If I don't chant my rounds, then no one will treat me like a sadhu. They won't give me any respect. They won't give me any prasadam in the temple. 
So I'm chanting my rounds. But I'm chanting and I'm reading something, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Udasinya. Uh -huh. I'm apathetic to my non uh -huh. There's a lack of sex resolve. Uh -huh. The second type is judja, means laziness or inertia. We don't really care so much. We're very lazy. The second reason why we're not attentive. The first reason is we're apathetic. We have some indifference. The second reason is we're lazy. Uh -huh. And the third reason is dikshepa, or distraction. We're chanting while we're sitting on the bus. We're chanting while we're watching the movie on television. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're chanting while we're reading a book or while we're reading the internet. And our mind is going somewhere else. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he says that when you do this nam yagya, only one thing is required. He said you should realize, you should meditate that Krishna is present with you in the form of his name. And think about that. This is the most important thing. If you could have five minutes, just five minutes, with President Obama, and you could ask him whatever you want, you're going to take it very seriously. So what to speak, we have two hours every day, at least two hours, to spend with the Holy Name, and I'm with Krishna. This is my time. For devotees who are married, you probably know by now, you have to, you should hear this before, you have to listen to your wife. That's part of your service. That's your service as a grahasana man. You have to listen to her. Because ladies, they need to have someone to pour out their heart to and tell about their problems. Isn't that true, Madhava Prabhu? It's true, but it's not that very good case. <laughs> but if you don't listen very nicely, then they become disturbed, yes. isn't it? <clears throat> they become very, very unhappy. So the basis of our relationships, of all relationships in this world, is attention. The symptom of love is attention. And this is how we cultivate love, by paying attention to someone. So if we're distracted, we're talking, your wife is talking to you and you're reading the newspaper at the same time. Yes, yes, dear, right, right, right. Krishna Kunda is very annoyed with me. Then uh, very bad for you. So we should understand we're spending time with Krishna. And this Krishna, as we were saying the other day, Nama Shrestam Manamapisachi Putram Atrasarupam, this is a gift I've gotten from my Gurudev. He's given me the holy name and he's told me, don't commit offense. And he's accepting service from me. And in particular, the service of chanting. This service of chanting, uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he describes, in the song we've been singing. Say Jagya Bedia Rohe Vaishnava Acharya Kani Ve Kirtana Jagya Sarva Jagya Arya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Vaishnava Acharya, all of our Vaishnava Acharyas are present. You can associate with Narottam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, Rupa Goswami, Jiva Goswami, Lokanath Goswami, all of them are present. And this Jagya, when we take this Jagya seriously and we chant, it's such a very, very important thing. Jani De Kirtana Jagya, Sarva Jagya are. Therefore, we should know that this Sankirtan Jagya, this is the best of all the jagyas. And just as it said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Vita Tura Muda Nisechanena Tripyanti Tatskanda Bujopa Sakaha Pranapaharachaya Tendriyanam Tataiva Sarvahanam Atyuteja That you pour water, you ever water the plants? Hmm? Yes? Where do you put water? Do you pour water on the ground in front of the plant? You pour, you pour water on the root of the plant. If we pour water on the flower, it's not going to help. If you pour water on the, tr on the trunk of a, a branch of a tree, it won't help. But we should water the root. By watering the root, then the whole tree becomes satisfied. So similarly, when we please Krishna, everyone becomes satisfied. All the devas become satisfied. All of our senses become satisfied. We become very happy, very peaceful, and that happens by chanting Krishna's name.
so they make a very nice drink. Would you like to have a very nice drink? A very sweet drink from Orissa? Okay, I'll teach you. This kind of drink is a different kind of drink. You don't drink with your mouth. This drink you drink with your ear. In Orissa, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is very popular. And many devotees, we teach this song to. You may have heard it from us before. Um, so in Arissa they have a little song they sing about the Hare Krishna mantra. And we'll teach this to everybody. Please repeat after me. Rama, 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 Krishna Nama Gi, Krishna Nama Gi, Rama Nama Ladua, 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 Krishna Nama Gi, Hari Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Kanda Kanda Kira Kira, Kanda Kira. Kanda Kira. Hari Nama Kanda Kira. Hari Nama Kanda Kira. That's the hardest part. Hari Nama Kanda Kira. Hari Nama Kanda Kira. Gori Gori. Gori Gori. Pee. Gori Gori Pee. Gori Gori Pee. Hari Nama Kanda Kira. Gori Gori Pee. Hari Nama Kanda Kira. Gori Gori Pee. Hari Nama Kanda Kira. Gori Gori Pee. It's a very nice meaning. The name of Lord Ram is like a nice ladu. Do you like ladus? Yes? Okay. So the name of Ram is like a nice ladu. And the name of Krishna is like very nice fragrant ghee butter. Do you like butter? So, uh, the name of Lord Hari is like Kandakira sweet rice. Do you also like sweet rice? So the song says, Rama Nama Ladu, Krishna Nama Ji, Hari Nama Kandakira Gori Gori. So you take the Rama Nama Ladu and the Krishna Nama Ji and the Hari Nama Kandakira Gori Gori, you mix it all together, you pee, you drink it. Rama Nama Ladu, Krishna Nama
I don't know what the time is. I didn't want to look at my clock. Nine o'clock. It's nine o'clock. Do we have time for a question? Yes. I have a humble request. I know there's some devotees who might be in understatement who like to sing Korana, Korana, Korana together. We sang it many times after in the last few years. But now you're here. Right. I think. <coughs> Would it be possible to... Is that anybody's question about that? Well, it just so happens that we have some songs. Of song.